all this down is from what Alan's told me. He's chief sprite. There's a lot of us sprites, he said. Spread over Lancashire. Air sprites, water sprites, marlequin like mad. <laughs> <laughs> you are now listening to this record. <laughs> it's a very special record. <laughs> I'll tell you the story behind it after I've introduced myself. Or myself according to Alan. Everything I know is told to me by Alan. And Alan said I was one at sprites up there. A boggart. A scriker. But airborne. And without a body. No substance. Only a voice. A ceaseless voice. But whatever I am, there must be more than one of me. Though I can't see anyone. And I can't see Alan. There's just a faint ginger shape occasionally. That must be Alan, I presume. A carrot coloured contour in darkness. Hot dark redness. It's more of a deep red gloom everywhere. All around me. And all I know about myself is from what Alan's told me. He's chief sprite. There's a lot of us sprites, he said. Spread over Lancashire. Air sprites, water sprites, marlequin like mad. Don't work at the evil one. Satan, that is. We've been here for centuries, and I've been all over. Until recently, I were inside a pair of Puma trainers hanging on a telephone wire over a bus stop on Thay 666 near Darwin. Alan told me this. I were hanging off at land, my voice merging with bleeding, busy, bombinating buzz on the telephone wire above me. I were damned to carry on whining inside shoes, haunting trainers. That's what Alan told me. Positively possessing pendulous Puma pumps, I were. And I told myself stories to keep me going. I were never silent. I would have liked to be silent, but I couldn't be silent. So I told stories Alan had told me. I don't know any others. To keep me going as I were hanging there in those rotten old trainers. Stinking to high heaven they were. Though I couldn't smell them. Suffering Jesus, they would have stunk if I could have smelled them. And it were a great view I had up there, apparently. Or it would have been if I could have seen it. A view over Pendle Hill in Lancashire. Chosen place is Pendle. And rest at Lancashire. Far to northern England that's touched by evil. It's all over the shop, so Alan informed me. Lancashire were always thought of to be one at dark corners at land. A superstitious place. Witches and popery, but they're not stupid, Lancastrians. It's not that. They're just used to weirdness. And they still believe in Satan. Dark Lord, they don't support him, but they believe in him. And no wonder, he's chosen to base his business operations in their land. Their rose red land. Do you go on? It all makes sense once that thinks about it. himself with colour red, colour and magic, and Lancashire is Red Rose County, Red Rose that were garlanded around gardens of Babylon, and one at big football teams in Lakes, who play in red, even call themselves Red Devils, and if it's numbers they want, say 666 Highway runs right through County up to Pendle, so they can't get more obvious than that, if they want satanic associations, satanic with a capital S, and what's more, there was something else, the valleys around Pendle, yes, where a few at local witches were caught a few years ago, that's where old plan were kicked off. Some of other witches got together for a bit of revenge and merry mischief. They were known for merriment, like witches, and they put a spell on small-scale weaving industry in those valleys. And their spell meant small industry gradually transformed into great satanic cotton mills at the Industrial Revolution. That at fearful, fiery furnace of the industrial world, all grew out of those Lancashire valleys, triggered by work at witches, working for the devil himself, dark one himself, capital D, capital O, capital D, capital D, as well, you know. Through global warming and ecological catastrophe caused by mass consumption and industrial expansion. It's all part of his plan, his extreme ex certificate exercise, disaster movie stuff, brewed up in some cauldrons in Pendle. That's why Merckx and Angles first thinkers of global capitalism. That's why they were in Manchester a while back. They needed to be at beaten out at the ebonic barbarous beast to predict how it would evolve, how paroxysm would come, how the beast would be defeated by its own contradictions. It's a nice thought. I can't see it myself. those cotton weaving wily witches in Lancashire. Then the mills arrived, which got bigger and bigger. Mills needed cheaper and cheaper cotton. So the African slave trade was built up through Lancashire port of Liverpool by Liverpool merchants to provide cheap labour to pick cotton in America. That were all Satan's idea. And cotton mill workers in Lancashire themselves were practically chained to their large looming looms. Small children worked in a hell of a in deafening noise and sweltering heat. And believe it or not, that one point mill workers showed support for Lincoln's American Civil War forces, trying to abolish slave trade in the US. Forces that were blockading slaving south. 
Even though they're blood bearded, led to a shortage of cotton. The cotton family, the panic it would cause. Bobbins were idle, and Lancashire workers had to dream were claiming for years. It was terrible for them, but mill workers still supported blockade. An example at selfless solidarity as slaves were slaves. Lancashire workers were fighting back, trying to foil devil's plan, and slavery were abolished in cotton fields of America. A setback for certain, but wage slavery carried on in Lancashire mills. Then later, in 20th century, workers were brought over from Asian subcontinent until they too were thrown out of work, and they were stuck there in mill towns, hassled by the MP, far-right party whose leader stood for election in Lancashire. Where else? All part at plan, keeping Kitchy County dark with a capital D. When he were emerging out at Red Mist, or a shape loomed, I should say. There were no emerging, if only they were emerging. But there's only ever looming, looming redness and gingerness. Looming redness and gingerness. musical group were really famous, Alan said. Satan can sort that out, no problem. Chart success, alt rest. Music world is under Big S's thumb. Always has been. Selling souls, with devil's music and all that jazz. And Mick once tried to work with reggae producer Lee Stratchberry. He asked Lee to produce one of his records, because Jamaican dub music is a threat to dark forces. Capital D and F. Alan told me this as well. There's something about it if your dubby drops in deep dub mixes. Moments when all instruments drop out into an abyss of silence. With snare shots echoing across the void, these moments suck up evil like a black hole. And dubby bass, deep, 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 diddy dub bass, absorbs and slows down evil energy. So Mick wanted to discover the secret at dub, to learn how it conquers darkness. He even started a record label putting out dub records so he could tame and then destroy it dub. But Lee suspected something. He wouldn't get involved with Mad Mark and masticating Mick to a Mick up to his rigs. He knew, all dub folk know, about Lancashire as art of Babylon. That's how Jamaican dub music found its way back to Lancashire. Because music that came out of Caribbean slavery tried to undermine beast from within. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. It makes sense. Dub is apparently righteous music. So Dub got into Red County and invaded their waves. A Radio Lancashire program called Up On Wire started to play dub music. It tried to turn terrible tide. And program started broadcasting in 1980s from a studio a few miles away from Pendle Hill. It got dub on there. It tried to drown out sprites like me, drowning out diabolical voices at Lancashire Air. And Lee Berry appeared live on the program. He stayed in Clither on Lee Pendle Rally there. He supported Bethel. And because of all this, the great sprites panic happened. And all sprites started wasting away. Devil sucked out of them. I needed to take refuge in thanging trainers. I was losing ability to sprite. But Alan heard a big threat. He had to stop it. So he went on radio. Sprites do that a lot. It's easy. We're a bit like radio waves. Voices on there. That's all we are. So he went on radio as Alan Keswick. He started a late night phone show on Red Bull's radio. And he was cramped and crawled. He savagely abused anyone who went on to the program. There were flouting with threats and wild ravings. Sorest madness of the world. He spat bilious bloody black fire of Satan out on to their ways. Trying to reclaim Lancashire air for darkness. Back of the air, barking at sounds of hell themselves. In background as he broke off for ad breaks. And in Revelations 13, all of this is prophesied. A ginger man will blacken and reclaim there all that red land with evil words. It says, or words to that general effect. If any man have an ear, let him hear, I say. And in Revelations 13, 
13. If you put together the sixth word from the start of the verse, what do you get? <laughs> Lancashire Radio Rap. 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 Well, it seems you haven't the intellect to argue your point. Perhaps it's because you're a bum brain. How do, Peter? Well, is your defence? You haven't one. Goodbye. How do... Who? Ah, go and play on the railway, you godless little crap. How do, Paul? I was going to tell you about this record, weren't I? I'm coming to that. And anyway, Alan often played a song on his show called Helter Skelter by a pop group from Liverpool. As often as he could, a record famous for hidden messages that only Keswick himself could interpret. And he also played that other Lancashire group, Fallen, who were named after Lucifer and his mates who descended from heaven into the abyss. But both these groups were only half dead, so to speak. were big billiest leading battles between darkness and light, like Lancashire itself, and some writing on one at Fallen single cover summed up conflict to forces. It contained this picture of pleading prophecy. I urge finder at this master tape never to unleash it on humanity. Ah, already feeble deity rival is clawing at my brain. If it is unleashed, the fall is here. Exoplasm exercise and humanity can either eat that grenade or face the second dark age. Meaning next one after the industrial age, I presume. When Satan has his very vicious and victorious victory, the only way out is to blow the head off. I guess that's what it all means. Singer, Marquis, the E is the evil bit, obviously. Embodied dark light, dichotomy within himself. A useless hex and priest, reliving witch trials. He could practice many half dark arts. Always looked a bit dualdy, and could croon like an angel. That last bit's not true. But there were another thing to do with Bibles and his car. at band. They threw big black Bibles at them. And what's more, Fallen once wrote a song in celebration at radio shows of Alan Keswick. And Alan were very taken with this. He told me so. He told me all of this. I'm just repeating what he said. And he said the song were a B-side called Lucifer Over Lancashire. <laughs> I'm just glad to get out of those trainers. After all those years, and get onto 
shining record. Shiny cover. Now that, that would have done just the same as me if that were in my shoes. is coming up, where a needle slips across shiny red vinyl and lifts up. And there's silence. Silence for thee. But not silence for me. If only it were silence for me. I'm still whining on in grooves, don't forget. Still damned to carry on inside these grooves. Inside your head. At least I'm not inside trainers. At least it's not that. But I still have to carry on. That's the thing, carry on ranting away forever. Think of that, think of what that word forever means. Alan said it were a very long time. Sniffing <laughs> 